when I was a very young boy, uh, the word that I used was dirigible. Uh, however, uh, this is not the word that uh, was used uh, when you heard about this thing that happened in May of 1937. Uh, if you look right here, you'll see the fire is starting uh, with the hydrogen-filled uh, balloon and about half of the crew are going to be killed. And uh, if you can see it going up in flames and people are, are, are dying. This is in Lakewood. New Jersey, right up over here across the river, and uh, some were fortunate enough to be dragged to safety before this fiery furnace took their lives. But there is a word, and uh, it's found in uh, Hebrews uh, chapter. 9 verse 27 and this word right here apokatai it means literally it was their lot or it was their fortune it was their destiny. It was their appointed lot. You know, like drawing lots. Uh, and that's what the, uh, n the journalists were saying. There were some who were fortunate enough. Uh, they, in other words, they had the good fortune. It was their lot to escape. But there were others, it was not so appointed, it was not their lot, it was not their good fortune to escape. And this is what it says here, that it is the lot of all people, that includes yours truly, once to die and then the Yom Hadin. And you saw that uh, craft going up in flames. And you saw the people screaming. There's nothing in the scriptures about purgatory. To be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. But if you are not one of God's people and you've never turned to him, and you don't belong to him. It goes like this. Once you die, you die once. And after that, that's the sequence, judgment. And we know the judgment will be a fiery, horrible judgment. It is appointed for mortals to die once and after that the Yom Hadin. Uh, the the day of judgment and uh, in order to uh, avoid that terrible day that fiery day it's uh, important that you understand for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And that means that we are fighters. Yes, we have a good fight to fight. And as you know, a prize fighter doesn't just uh, pummel the air. He doesn't box aimlessly. Uh, it, I think it's, that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 26. 
I box in this way, not as beating the air, he says. I, I pummel my body and subdue it, less preaching to others. I myself go up in flames, is what he's basically saying. And, uh, you know, uh, people, uh, especially millennials, they don't like going to a house of God. They don't like attending services. They see the moral failures, the hypocrisy. And also, you know, they're busy. They've got their their uh, iPhone and their Facebook postings and they've got to visit the tattoo parlor and meet with their friends at Starbucks and they've got all this stuff they got to do. And frankly, they don't have time for, uh, for this. The uh, digital age has absorbed all their time and they really don't want to take the time. Also, they're running from God and uh, they don't see the need. Today, a man told me that uh, he had come to the Lord but uh, the only c congregational life that he needed was in his own heart because he could worship the Lord quite well without any other distractions. And I told him, I said, well, have you ever seen a prize fighters training camp? Rocky Marciano ran seven miles a day. Uh, he had a regimen that most people would have been worn out the first 15 minutes. But when he went into the ring, he was in top shape. And those fists of his were very strong to rain blows on his opponent. And we have to be alert and sober of mind because our enemy, the devil, is in the ring. And he's looking to devour us. But we're fighting not just him, but the world and the flesh. And we need our trainer and we need our cut man and our manager. We need our training camp. We need to uh, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We need prayer. We need exhortation. We need scripture. We need preaching, especially. Uh, how can they hear without a preacher? We, we need uh, two or three gathered in his name. There he is in the midst of them. And uh, in Hebrews, uh, chapter uh, 10 it says do not stop meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but continue to build each other up because we see the day coming we're talking about the Yom Hadin where it's appointed unto men once to die and then the judgment, and that day is coming. Uh, and, and in Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Some are in that habit, the habit of doing that. But exhorting one another, preaching, and so much the more as you see the day approaching hallelujah the day the day he referred to in chapter 9 verse 27 the yom hadin the day of judgment that day is approaching how much more do we need uh the fellowship and uh back in uh 2021 the lord led me to start a nightly prayer meeting with preaching seven nights a week and he led me to do that on Mother's Day of two, of 2021 and I had no idea how crucial it would be 
Uh, at the time, I was just thinking about a nightly revival. But we need to remember that a prize fighter doesn't just get in the ring and say, well, you know, I don't need my cut, man. If uh, my opponent makes the blood squirt out of my eyebrows, uh, I'll deal with it myself. I don't need my, I don't need my trainer. I don't need my coach. I don't need anybody in the in the my corner saying, now watch out for that world over there. He's got a real stiff uppercut or don't or the uh, you know the flesh watch out for that flesh that fighter over there he he he's coming in try, doing body blows uh, and uh, you were really weak last last round you've got to get stronger this round with uh, the devil because uh, you see you're in a fight you are engaged in a fight you have to understand that and in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17 it says obey them that have the rule over you uh, by this it's talking about those people that are your coaches your trainers and they have a certain authority to to speak to you in the spirit and say watch out for this or be on guard for that because they they pray for you and they they're looking they've got your back they're watching out for you and they and and uh, you you need to submit yourselves and let them see you for they watch for your souls as they that must give an account in other words these these trainers these coaches these cut men these corner men are going to have to answer to a higher authority for how they helped you in this fight and it says they want to do this with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you in other words don't make their job hard but try to be uh, malleable because they're on your side they don't want to see you get knocked out in the ring. They don't want to see uh, moral failure on your part or whatever. And the devil goes around uh, like a roaring lion, seeing whom he can devour. And he would love to get you in the ring and deliver some body blows and some temptations and some some difficulties and stumbling blocks put in your path to make you trip up and fall and so we need help and i said to this man today i said you know you you can't fight this fight by yourself all of these people these 12 shalahim uh except for judas who 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 went out from the fellowship. He went out from the covering of the fellowship. He went into the night. He came under uh, an alien authority. And he forsook God's authority. And we see what happened. It was appointed unto him to die, and after that, the judgment. And in the first chapter of the book of Acts it says he went to his place and you get the feeling that it was not a good place it was not the pearly gates so to speak and so what we're saying here is all the Shalahim had to be in the house of God what makes you think that you don't need the fellowship of the believers and there are many ways we can get that fellowship now. Even if there's COVID-19 and congregations have to temporarily close or there's some kind of restriction on getting together uh, in the flesh, we are still able to do this with the technology that God has given us. 
How much more do we need to do this? And Lord, I want to thank you right now for the 840 subscribers to our YouTube channel who are joining us, who are in the spirit with us, praying with us, who are listening to the Word of God, who are getting strengthened in the Word of God, who have their Bibles out, who are studying with us, who are under the authority of the Word of God. Oh, Father, I want to pray that the Word will go forth all over Burrow Park. I thank you for the men who came from 17th Avenue and 57th Street in Burrow Park. And he came into Beth Shalom today. He is a klezmer musician. And he looked around. He really liked the uh, little shul that we have there. And he took my phone number. And he wanted to talk to me more because I was talking to him about the Tahiyas Hamasim, the resurrection of the dead, and the Yom Hadin, the day of judgment, and how it's appointed unto man once to die. We die once. There's no reincarnation. Hasidism has that doctrine, and it's a, an evil unbiblical, un-Jewish doctrine. And after that, after death, there is the judgment, the mishpat. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach that you will keep us on the straight path. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Most people are going that way. And they are falling from the sky in flames like the, the, the Lakewood, New Jersey, horrible tragedy that happened so many years ago. Lord, we know that there is a fiery judgment coming on unbelievers. I pray, Lord, that the word of God will go forth, that the word of God will increase that the word of God will not return void, that the word of God will bring believers. Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. That they will come to the Lord, that they will take the mikvah, that they will receive the mikvah in the Ruach HaKodesh, that they will become a responsible member of a local body where the Bible is believed and faithfully taught, where they can be trained and raised up as leaders where they can be entrusted. It says entrust these things to faithful people who can teach others also. That, that Lord, we're, we're asking you to bring people in who will be used of God greatly. And oh God, we pray right now, Yeshua, come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life, help me, Lord, to serve you all the days of my life, to always look for you, Lord. Help us remember the terrible Hindenburg disaster. Help us remember those people that were lost. Help us come to a saving knowledge of Yeshua HaMashiach. Help us walk in the faith. And we'll give you all the praise, dear God. And we'll give you all the glory and we'll thank you forever.